إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم ربي يسر ولا تعسر وتممنا بالخير وبك نستعين يا فتاح يا أرحم الراحمين الحمد لله الحمد لله الحمد لله All praise belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Our creator, our nourisher, our sustainer That one Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Despite all of our faults and all of our weaknesses and all the sins that we do knowingly and unknowingly in the light and also in the dark. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has looked inside our hearts and Allah has given us another opportunity to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be in a gathering where Allah's name is mentioned over and over and over again. So we take this great opportunity inshallah to say the kalima la ilaha illallah. لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله وسنسيرتي إن شاء الله الحمد لله the topic that I have today is quite exciting for me because it's something that I've been dealing with quite regularly and I think it's something that a lot of parents and all grandparents will be able to take إن شاء الله so the topic was the changing societal trends so what is that about now i got a i got a very close friend of mine uh, we spend many 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 late nights standing outside after our classes are finished and he's got a 14 year old son and he's asking me how do i raise my 14 year old how do i raise my he started off at 12 13 14 he keeps asking me how do i raise my teenager and what happens is that we keep bringing up new things there's always new things coming up there's a there's this problem and that problem and these are the problems that i didn't deal with when i was growing up and my response is that hey this is my suggestion this is what i think but in reality i'm going to be staying close to you because i'm going to be learning from you what you, what 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 you're going through what mistakes you're making and what are the uh, successful things that you're making the reason why is that things are changing very quickly. So I'll go into that a little bit more just now. What does it mean that things are changing too quickly? But let's look at the Prophet wasallam. Let's look at the Prophet wasallam. The Prophet was aware of everything that was around him. He, was, he knew what was happening within his household. He knew what was happening within his uh, small community uh, in Mecca, in Medina. And he knew what was happening between the Persians and he knew what was happening between the Persians and the Romans, what wars, who was winning. The Prophet ﷺ uh, knew the, 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 the adha, the, uh, the, the customary habits of the different Arab tribes, which tribes would speak louder, which tribe would speak softer. The Prophet ﷺ was aware of the different cultures from different countries. So when the Arabs, as they, when, they, uh, when there was an African tribe that became uh, Muslims and entered into Medina, they were playing drums. The Prophet Sallallahu knew of them and the Prophet Sallallahu knew how to respond in an appropriate manner. So this is what I want to talk about is the situational awareness that we need to start being aware of. And it's the most important things in our day-to-day -day life. You know, what is happening literally around me the, with the next person next to me. Because it allows for us to make the best decision for the most favorable outcome. So our Prophet ﷺ had that perfect awareness. He was aware of every single thing. He would be, the Prophet was a man of culture. Um, knew the Ada of the ladies, the Ada of the men. So when the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, when 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 law was introduced, where now the women are having rights, uh, the Prophet knew, you know, they, oh now you have inheritance and you have this this power and, and, and rights and so on and so forth. But Prophet was aware that well, this is something that the ladies have never had before. So I also need to make sure that they understand what these rights are and what these powers are uh, that they are having. So that's why we have the famous hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam sitting with a group of ladies and they're laughing and giggling. They are having a class with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and then Omar would come and all the ladies will go quiet, right? And the Prophet's aware that, well, there's a couple lessons that we take from that is that the Prophet is teaching the ladies, the Prophet is making them feel comfortable while they're learning, that they can giggle, and that the Prophet was aware that everyone fears Ummah. So again, what does this tell us? We need to now be aware again of what's happening around us, what's happening specifically with our children. Right. Uh, once upon a time, you know, I hope some of us can relate to this. I can still relate. We had one phone in the house. Like this, when I talk to the youngsters, they're like, "What? You had one phone and it's connected to the wall?" And I said, "I said like, 
the, the, the biggest heartache, the, the biggest headache for my father is that he only had one daughter and six boys. But the phone will always ring for the one daughter and all the brothers will pick up and we'll, we'll all rush to that one phone. My father said, you know what, I'm not paying the bill because it's just too much headache. Right? But my, that, that, that's what we had once upon a time. And that's my father's awareness of what's happening and that's his way of dealing with it. Allah give him Janet of Firdaus. Um, but moving from there, then um, we had, like when we were growing up, we, had, we have our friends and we say, okay, I'll meet you at so and so. I'll see you on Sunday at 10 o'clock at a certain place. And then we'll do that. Right? And that, that was the environment that we lived in. Right? The reason why we have these experiences is because that's the environment, that's the situation that we were in. And slowly, slowly, we had the internet creep into our house. So we started off with that big, um, big desktop that we have on every single table at home. And then we started going onto the internet, started off with things like MIRC. I don't know if anyone knows that. Got the friends there, and then in MySpace, and then Facebook, and then now into the Instagram, and then TikTok. And that, you know, if you can, if everyone here knows about those things, well, thumbs up, but really in reality, that's quite at the bottom, right? Then now we had um, Netflix and now we have these streaming devices. So what's happened is that once upon a time, if we wanted to watch a TV show, we'd have to be at home specifically at that time um, to watch that if we're not fighting with our siblings, who's going to watch what show at what time? So our situation dictated that we had to make sacrifice, we had to make plans. Now, our parents, they were, you know, the, our parents' generation, I, I blame my parents, you know, because of discomfort that I have. Is I didn't create the TV, I didn't create the PlayStation. My parents' generation made that so I could have entertainment. Now, what happened is that now we, um, we, are allow, um, we have that that's been passed down. We know there's all the devices, and I'm not going to go into all the devices and things like that. Um, but that's what we have to be aware of. We can't compare ourselves, what we grew up 20, 30, 40 years ago, to what our children's going out. The situation is now really different. And we need to know like, literally what's happening on a day-to-day -day basis. Say, so I sit in this position of privilege because I get to teach kids. Um, I get to teach from little kids all the way to big kids. So one of the big things that I like to talk about is like what I literally see. Um, so yesterday, we, uh, for the first time in many years, I saw a picture, well, I, it came to my mind of a, the minute the girls do the duck face, you know, when they, I don't, shouldn't blame the girls, the boys do it, but oh, I'm going to cop this from my wife now. All right. <laughs> all right. But there are certain groups when they, <laughs> when they take a photo, they did the little, the little, um, like, the little face where they, they, they do like a little smooch thing, right? And they take the photo. I think everyone knows what I'm talking about. So I talked about the girls and stuff like that. And they expressed their feelings about that. Um, and then we'll talk about on other days, like the first thing that I'll do is like, I'll wait for, to listen to their conversation, what their conversation's going on about. Because I'm not part of their circle. I'm too old. But when they come in, they like to talk. Everyone likes to talk. So I'll listen to their conversation, then I'll jump in and be like, oh, okay. So then uh, I learn about the TikTok dancers. So they'll t sometimes I'll do the TikTok dancers. And very important that I'm not going to stop them while they're doing the dances. Um, because that is who they are. That's their identity. If I say, no, that's haram, then, I'm never, then they're going to know that, all right, that, that moment when I come in here, I'm not going to be myself. Um, so I'm never going to learn about them. So if my children know, like, oh, okay, Abba's, Abba, my, I'm, I'm strict with my children, so my kids aren't going to express the TikTok dances and things like that because it's haram. So the big job for me is just like, okay, that's what you want to talk about. I'm just going to listen in and, and stuff like that, and then I'm going to learn, and then I'm going to jump in and show me. You know, sometimes I'll put on... Um, like the, we'll, we'll put out on the screens there what videos they're watching and what rappers and stuff like that. Now, my definition of rap is from 20 years ago and their definition of rap is I, I, I can't understand what it is. Um, but I have to understand that that's who they are. And I have to be aware of this is now their identity. Um, so very important that we are... Uh, you know, we have a, we have a perfect ideal, idealization of what our children should be, but just the same way our parents had a perfect idea who we are and how many secrets and naughty things we'd never told our parents. Um, and that's also because we were scared to tell them. 
So our children's now consuming so much media. Right? We're living in a postmodernism uh, era where, the, where their reference point is a reference point and coming from another reference point. So I had a five-year-old come to me and said, Imam, have you seen this meme? Because she's trying to explain to me another meme. So if you don't know what a meme is, now you've got to learn what a meme is. So she's telling me, Imam, there's this, do you know this meme here? Because it's, now she wants to relate it to another meme. So again, that, that is their understanding of the world. Short bites of information. It's not us to punish them because they didn't create TikTok. My five-year-old five didn't create TikTok. It's my generation that created it. But I've got to be aware of this happening. So this is the current trend that's happening today. And Sheikh Ibrahim, Allah bless him, he came um, from UK and we had a special meeting with him. And he spoke about like a couple of things that need, you know, ideally what would happen in the community is one thing is like parents' education. Um, and, well, how am I going to educate parents when these things are moving so quickly? If I designed a course today, by next week it's going to be outdated. By next month it's going to be outdated. So I'm going to talk about something right at the end, inshallah, about that. Um, so we, and, and the other, that's number one. And number two is that Sheikh was talking about why is it that I have created, like, my idea, and he, he hit me on the na nail on the head, is that in this space here, I've created a place where my children can, not just my children, my children not so much, other children now, because my, um, uh, are able to talk to me about this TikTok and the dancers and they'll show me the rappers and the, which celebrities they're in and the beefs that's happening between the celebrities. So they've come into this space and said, I feel comfortable to talk to you about this. Um, then Sheikh hit us and said, why isn't it that the kids are comfortable to tell the parents about it? Why is it that the kids have to come here or whatever other safe space to talk to about another adult about what's going on in their life? Why is it that our kids can't talk about their life and their raps and all that to their own parents? So that's, that's a big one that we took away from and that will lead into something that I'll end off with, inshallah. Um, so the more that we uh, become aware of what's happening and we, it's... it's just like you wake up and you say, my job as a parent's never going to end, right? Still got to wake up, feed the kids, dress the kids, take them to school, right? Now we've got that added responsibility of knowing what the actual culture is. Not the culture that we have at home. I'm, I'm Malay or I'm Aussie or whatever I am. That's not their culture. That's not their, you know, that, that's part of their identity. But the real culture is what they, they are consuming, what their eyes and minds are thinking about. That's their real identity, but that's the things that we can't see. And those things that we can't see will lead them to make those judgments. And what we do know today is that information is just too quick. It's too quick. I don't, don't want to go into that. Um, so as a, uh, inshallah, as a, um, as a project that we, Academy of Life, is going to be running, uh, inshallah, just stay tuned, inshallah, to um, Academy of Life. If you follow us on Facebook or whatever, I'll have the posters up. Uh, is two things, inshallah. Uh, number one is that we want to be creating a space here where it's going to be an expression session, meaning the same way that I've been dealing with the youngsters is that you come in and let's just have a conversation. It usually leads down a certain path. And then we're going to be looking at like allowing them to do plays, videos, raps, painting, art, whatever it might be. So we just busy creating something like that and we're looking at a very specific age group 11 to about 15 because that's a group of youngsters that they're finding themselves and um and it'll be a place where we're literally going to talk about everything there's nothing's going to be off the board and parents will be aware well we're giving reports and stuff like that what's the content that's been spoken about but the, the condition is that there's not going to be a limit the other one is that we talk about the parents and education like literally so we're sitting here thinking oh man what's a meme so if you're still wondering what a meme is um so probably this is should pay, pay attention a little bit more um what we want to do is we want to get parents coming on as a community so when I started off, I started off this conversation saying there's a father of a 14-year-old will sit outside, talk a lot about his child, how might this is the problem that my child's going through, um, and every single week there's something new. And I said to him, I don't know how to respond to you. 
to be honest, I'm waiting to see how you play out with your children so you can tell me. Right? So inshallah, in the up very uh, short future that's coming, we're going to have a parents community um, where, for example, we'll have um, all the parents coming in and literally about, okay, this is, we'll crack up the TV. This is the stuff that my kids are watching. My kids into Fortnite. I mean, Fortnite's even now outdated. Minecraft is outdated, right? If you still think that's what your kids are into, then you're outdated. Right, so this is what the kids are watching. This is the rapper. This is the blah blah blah. Um, so at least I'm going to be aware of what's happening over there. And just because it's happening to your kids doesn't mean it's not going to happen to mine. So inshallah, if this is something that you are worried about your children and just can't keep up with them, inshallah, on a slow, steady space, we'll be creating a, a space for parents to come together on a, maybe a weekly or fortnightly basis, whatever it might be. To inshallah try and tackle this because at the end of the day that's constantly we as imams we're constantly getting i got a problem with my child like this blah 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 and we are just surprised like i don't know how to deal with it so one of the parents might know a solution and things like that so it becomes a bit more of a community inshallah and that is us being more aware of the situation that we are in and you'll have your eyes um opened up inshallah um some some of the stuff is really scary إن شاء الله بارك الله فيكم وآخر دعوانا الحمد لله رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته as uh, Sheikh Luqman has mentioned جزاك الله كل خير may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward uh, the brothers and elders in the community that has allowed what we see today uh, to be one of our visions if it wasn't for the community and their support financially, Academy Alive will not be here today. And it's in dire need for those who are attached with the community to see, you know, the fitna is of another level and defined very differently. Um, well, people are still fighting about, you know, how to pray. We've got bigger issues where kids are asking their parents, you know, is there really God? I can't see it. And people are fighting about this matter and that matter. <clears throat> when their deen and they believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has been in state. It's jeopardized like never before. And we recognize that here at Academy of Life. And we choose not to get into any controversies. We choose not to get into any controversies. Because we have something on the front line that needs our full attention. And just like Sheikh Luqman mentions, it's running 100 miles per hour. So if we stop for a small moment to worry about a small controversy, we're outdated. And so alhamdulillah, with different experts like of Dr. Akram, we have Benil on the ground, Sheikh Luqman, who's a skater boy by heart, grew up here, born in Australia, in Lismore, Sheikh Hakim, and other, other imams. That's our worry. Not about getting, you know, worrying about building or construction. We're more worried about people. One of the great sheikhs, he mentioned Sheikh Yusuf, it was, he was mentioned. No, he was telling us. Sheikh Yusuf was mentioning many, many years ago. He says in Urdu, but I'll say in English. He said, if only mankind can concentrate more on people than bricks. If they could concentrate more on people than bricks. Bricks will come about. Constructions will happen. Hospitals will have to come about. Mm. Dentists will have to come about, but it, it all came about because they concentrated on people first. So that is what we're trying to do here at Academy Alive, inshallah. Tackle the issues that our kids are going through. LGBT being a massive problem in our community. Our kids are confused. They, you know, they're, they're everything from every corner, whether it's Disney, whether it is the local shows, everything is pushing towards the permissibility and the normalness of LGBT. Something that's haram, it's haram. Our kids need to know about it. But at the same time, should they hold that grudge? Dr. Shibley mentioned so beautifully about the pets. Me, growing up, my father always told me, don't touch a dog. And I grew up hating a dog. And I thought to myself, would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala create something that we should hate? The only place Allah ta'ala speaks about hate is, kana adu mubin shaitan. Should we hate another human being? Studying about Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, studying the prophets, they loved. All they could, they could give da'wah because they loved. So even though they hated the act, the hack was condemned and was haram, they loved the creation of Allah. 
They love the person that was doing the action. And so can we differentiate that? That's hard. That is why the Prophet says, Man ra'a minkum munkaran fal yughayyir biyadi. Fa illam yastati' fabi balisani. Fa illam yastati' fabi qalbi. Wa thalika adha'af al-iman. Because the Prophet of Allah knew that iman is not going to be in the level where everyone can separate between hating the action and hating the person. That he said, he who sees wrong being done, stop it with your hands. But if you're not able to, meaning you cannot differentiate the action from the person, from the creation of Allah, that has given love by giving it life, then stop it with your tongue. If you cannot, then think bad of it. And that is the lowest form of Iman. The question still arises, can I split the action from the human being and still love the creation of Allah because Allah has given that life? Thank you, Dr. Shibli. I've learned a lot from that talk. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us, bless us, keep us together as one, allow us to be successful in this life and the life hereafter. Mikael. <coughs> <coughs>